My name is Justin Ziegler. I am from the law firm of Jay-Z Helps, an injury law firm. We serve the entire state of Florida, representing people who get injured if someone else is at fault. Today I'm going to talk about hand and wrist injuries and broken bones and other injuries from accidents. You can see this is the hand. First, we're going to look at some of the common broken bones in different accidents or that occur from accidents. This is a distal radius fracture. You can see the fracture. You can see the fracture here. The radius is the part of the hand, the bone, the thicker bone that runs right here, also known as a broken wrist. The scaphoid fracture is one of the common fractures of the hand. You can see a scaphoid fracture right there. There's many different other types of common hand and wrist injuries. You can have a sprained wrist. You can injure the tendons, the nerves, the ligaments in the hand, etc. You can also get arthritis of the hand or wrist, and you can get injuries that are very severe, such as, or can be very severe, such as RSD. Again, this is the anatomy of the hand um, here. You can go online, there's more than you have time to read about the hand, so I'm not gonna focus too much on that. So getting money for pain and suffering in a car accident case in Florida, assuming someone else is at fault. If your injury is very minor, and that's the first type of hand or wrist injury I'm gonna talk about, minor injury, overall it's difficult to get money for pain and suffering, okay? Uh, that is because in Florida, you need to meet the standard of showing that your hand or wrist injury is permanent in order to get money for pain and suffering. How much is a fr hand fracture worth? When I say how much is a hand fracture worth, I'm for right now talking about the pain and suffering component of the case. Now keep in mind, the way you come up with the value for a hand injury claim is you say, what is the pain and suffering worth? What are the out-of-pocket medical bills? What are the lost wages? You add those all together. That gets you to the full value of the case. And then you subtract or reduce the case by any factors that may uh, warrant reduction, such as your fault, difficulty proving that the hand injury was caused by the accident. But just the pain and suffering component, one of the three big components we're going to look at, I say that the value of a hand or wrist fracture, uh, the pain and suffering component is $35,000 to $70,000. Again, this applies to Florida. And when I say I say, I'm arriving at this number through jury verdict research, through looking at past jury verdict and seeing what juries typically award for the pain and suffering component of a hand or wrist fracture. If you have surgery to your broken bone, your hand, that increases the uh, pain and suffering component of your hand or wrist fracture significantly. This is again the full value. You then look at any factors that could warrant reduction such as your fault, etc. Now once you have surgery on your hand or wrist, like I said, it really drives up and increases the full value of the pain and suffering component. I say that the um, pain and suffering component for a uh, hand or wrist fracture with surgery where you have a rod or, or a metal plate inserted in, into your, your hand or wrist, the pain and suffering component is about $150,000 and up. I'm going to go over real quickly some accidents and settlements that I've had and if it was not my settlement or verdict, I will let you know that. This is a, a, a car for a client of mine that he was driving when another car blew a stop sign and hit him. He had surgery, he fractured the bone right here. He had surgery at a metal plate put in and then removed. And we settled the case for $125,000. Most of that settlement was for the pain and suffering component of the claim. His medical bills, after we were able to get them reduced, were very, very small. I represented a scooter rider and we settled his case for $52,000. Most of the value of that case was because he also hurt his eye. He crashed in South Florida, particularly in North Miami Beach, so Florida law applied. I also represented the uh, driver of a car who had a scapholunate ligament tear. You can see the scaphoid and the lunate there and the ligament runs between them and she tore that. The limits in that case, the available bodily injury liability limits were, were only $10,000, unfortunately. Nationwide insurance paid the settlement and that accident occurred in Miami. The value of a wrist sprain, wrist sprains in themselves are not worth that much money, uh, generally very small amounts of money uh, for the pain and suffering component of the case of the claim. I had a client who had pain in his wrist and he also had some other injuries as well. USAA insured the, the careless driver that caused the accident and we settled for $25,000 of his uninsured motorist insurance. 
Actually, let me say, USA was his uninsured motorist insurer. The other driver did not have liability insurance. I represented another driver who got $10,000 for a uh, wrist sprain. A hit and run driver caused the accident. There was heavy damage to the vehicle, uh, which is very important in hand and wrist sprain claims. One of the things that the at fault insurer, insurance company is going to look at is to look at how much damage is there to the vehicle. The theory being the more damage to the car, the more likely you truly did hurt your hand or wrist in the accident. The less damage or no damage, the less likely they are to believe that you injured your hand or wrist in the accident. In that case that I settled for $10,000, she took an ambulance to the hospital. That is an important factor in a case. However, you can still, you may still be able to settle your case for a lot of money even if you did not take an ambulance to the hospital. And she also had other injuries as well. There's other types of injuries that you can have to your hand or wrist. This is not my case. There was a lady who was bit in at the zoo by a jaguar, believe it or not. And she, the total verdict was $139,000, a little bit over that. Her thumb was amputated. Now I've just gone over a few, a small, small amount of the hand injury claims that I've handled. You can go throughout my website and the articles and videos I've mentioned that I've really handled a lot of hand and injury claims with surgery, where plates were put in, where, where, where there's been multiple surgeries from all types of accidents. Your hand doctor is very important in these type of claims. You may treat with a uh, hand specialist and you generally want a doctor who's gonna, within the bounds of truth, be as favorable as possible for you because the insurance company will get to have uh, their hand specialist uh, examine your hand. I suggest immediately hiring a lawyer if you have hurt your hand, you don't know how bad it's gonna get. Uh, insurance companies represent their clients and that's who they are interested in protecting. Uh, they're very, insurance adjusters are very experienced, so I highly recommend you get an attorney. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can call us at 888 594 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Please call us today.